thought he was wearing a mask. Yeah, let's see. Just wondering though. Sounds good to me. Bangkok, Thailand. <laughs> Welcome to the virtual Spring into Songkran Splendors, Thailand's New Year celebration presented by Amazing Thailand. We hope you're doing well and staying safe during these trying times. And thank you for tuning in to celebrate Thailand's New Year with us today. My name is Tita, PR manager with the Tourism Authority of Thailand, New York, and your host today. Now, let's kick off with some good news. Thailand just reduced its mandatory quarantine for vaccinated travelers to seven days starting this month. For international arrivals who have not yet completed the vaccination, the quarantine period is now reduced from 14 days to 10 days. Travelers can apply for a visa exemption to get a certificate of entry and stay in Thailand for up to 45 days. You can browse and book a government certified quarantine hotel at any amazing Thailand safety and health administration at asq.locanation.com. If you wish to stay longer, you may apply for the tourist visa and stay up to 60 days or a special tourist visa for up to 90 days. For more information, visit thailandinsider.com. Now, let's get to know Songkran, shall we? For some, Songkran is the world's biggest water fight, but calling Songkran a water fight would be like saying Christmas is all about Santa Claus. It's just the tip of the iceberg. Songkran is considered a family day and is a festival of happiness. It is Thailand's way of life and our treasured heritage and legacy. Songkran runs from April 13 to 15 in the hottest month of the year in Thailand. And it's the time for people who have moved to other cities and towns to travel back home, to reunite with their families, similar to Christmas in the States, but with a splash. This year's Songkran festivities will be celebrated responsibly with a new normal way to preserve Thai culture while staying safe. And today we're taking you to Chiang Mai, Thailand to experience Songkran Thai New Year. We're going to visit local temples, observe traditions, learn how to make some amazing delicious food, and we're going to meet the elephants. It's gonna be really fun, and it's Thailand like you've never seen before. And of course, there will be a Q&A for questions and comments, so please be sure to chat with us at the Q&A box below. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to begin with our one night only Songkran celebration with the lovely locals from the Bandrai Gongkin community in Chiang Mai, Thailand. This community is known for its local wisdom and wellness of the Lan Na lifestyle that is passed down for generations and become a holistic health oriented community. Here's a short clip of their Thai wisdom and wellness that you can experience during your stay in Bandrai Gongkin. การการเริ่มกิจกรรมการเริ่มขังของที่บ้านเราของที่บ้านได้กองกิ่งนะครับก็คือการเริ่มขังนี่จะเป็นปราชาปราชพรมบัญญาชาวบ้านที่มีตั้งแต่โบราณเข้ามาเราใช้อาหารเป็นยาพอจิตใจดีมันก็ไม่เกิดความเครียดหน้าตาก็ยิ้มแย้มอย่างเงี้ยค่ะก็เป็นมีผลเพราะนั้นมาบ้านเราของกิ่งมีความรู้สึกว่ามาเหมือนอยู่บ้านตัวเอง Here with us today, live from Chiang Mai, Kun Kana from Trikaya Tours. Sawadika Kun Kana. Sawadika Kun Tida. It's so great to see you. 
So great to see you too. And good morning, right? It's morning time in Thailand. Exactly. <laughs> Happy Songkran to you. Happy Ander. Songkran in a little bit in advance. <laughs> yes. I'm also in Chiang Mai, as you can see here <laughs> in the background. Uh, I wish. That's I wish. right. That's right. I can <laughs> sense a vibe. Yeah, thank you. Well, happy Song Brang Kun Kana. And whenever you're ready, please give us a tour and show us how the locals in Bandai Gong King celebrate their Song Brang. For sure, for sure. It is our greatest pleasure to welcome you to Wat Ton Gwen because it's one of the few remaining wooden temples in Thailand right now that it's still in its original state, which was built in the 19th century and makes it extra special and very popular among the Thai locals. But it's not very well known among the local as uh, among like worldwide as yet. So that's why today it's going to be extra special virtual tour for everyone but i'm not here alone as you can see as you will see very shortly i'm not here alone that's why i'm extra excited because we are here with the villagers of ban rai gong king and today we'll get to see not just the temple but in this auspicious event of songkran festival in thailand we'll get to see the villagers how they celebrate all the aspects of songkran festival here in this temple let's go now, as you can see, the beautiful ladies who are the villagers and gentlemen from Ban Rai Gong King community are looking dashing in Thai Lana traditional dresses or the traditional Northern Thai style dress. The Lana Thai ladies have sarong, or the local people call it pasin. As you can see, there are long skirts made of cotton that comes in a variety of colors. We often get to see the locals dress up during the special occasions like this Songran festival. Wow, it seems like the entire villagers. And of course, they are carrying flowers, offerings, or the gifts to the elders, and Tung, which I'm going to talk about very shortly. As you can see, there are vertical Norton flag in colorful pieces of paper, and we're going to see the meaning behind it. First of all, we need to talk about Songran. It is one of the most, if not the most, important festival in Thailand. It's also very well known worldwide. Songran is Thai traditional New Year. And the word Songkran actually derives from ancient Sanskrit. It literally means step into, enter, or pass into. So the essence of festival is the idea of a new beginning, a time of revitalization, and a fresh start. Songkran is Thailand's national holidays as well, so it falls during April 13 to 15 of every year. However, Songkran in Thailand is, like Kuntida said, it's also known as a water festival, as the people actually splash water, <laughs> um, but not ex exactly fight with water, but splash water to signify the freshness and wash away bad luck um, because they believe that they want to start fresh for the new year. So this is the hottest season of the year. So it's a good reason to start like freshen up a little bit with some water, also signifying the abundance. And boom, right here is a vertical Norton flag, um, which is, comes with bright color made of papers, is used to decorate the sand pagoda. And Tung is deeply symbolic for representing a pathway or ladder to heaven. And this, they are decorating a sand pagoda, which was usually collectively built by the local community for the use and the purpose of the temple. Now they have a lot of uh, great, beautiful, comes with color, usually to demarcate the boundary, the sacred site of the temple. And in the temple itself, usually people in the community will gather together uh, to join merit making, offering alms to the monks, listening to the teaching of the monk, meditate, and to meet each other. One of the main activity as you're seeing right now is called Song Nam Pra. It's a tradition to pour the scented water onto the Buddha statue. 
and the water is is very well to note that very important to note that they usually do not pour the water on the head of the buddha statue but the torso the body or the feet or the hand instead and this is for them the belief that it's will wash away the bad luck of the past year and also make a wish for a new year. So of course, this is very important. They will ask for a blessing, make a little bit of wish um, like this. And this is like scented water with um, flower petals. Now moving on to the next session here, we see a lot of people all gathered together in this area. It is because during Songkran is also national holiday. So people will get back to their hometown to be with their family, to celebrate the festival. That's why Song Grande is also called Family Day. It's also the time of the year that we express our respect and gratitude to our elders by pouring scented water onto our parents or grandparents' palms or sometimes the respected elders in the community. We also offer them alms, uh, gifts, or necessities. And this is called Rot Nam Dam Pua in Thai. So as you can see, they're now talking, asking for the elders' blessing. And also the elders will in turn give them the blessings in their local language. Usually wishing them good luck for the new year, prosperity, health, strength. They're also splashing a little bit of water just to wish them good luck. So that they're using the local North language to give them the blessing. And this is being done every year. Now moving to the next section is you will see that uh, also the ladies are now um, offering some gifts and also, uh, to the monks and pouring scented water onto the hands of the monks. This is again to pay respect and receive the blessing from the respected monks for a better year to come. So the monks are the most respected figures in the Theravada Buddhist community like Thailand, throughout the country, we, we go to the temples, we meet and listen to the monks teaching and also pay respect to them. And the monks will be giving the blessing to the people in Pali language. Pali is known to be the language of Theravada Buddhism, which have been preserved and passed down. The monks and novices have to learn Pali for chanting and understanding the teaching of the Lord Buddha. So now they are taking turns to ask uh, for the blessing and also to pay respect to the monks. As you can see just now, usually we have uh, the act of paying respect by why, which is a little bow, but for monks, because they are the most respected um, group of people in Thailand. So of course uh, you do grab. So we bow and put our hands together. And also we offer some gifts um, to pay respect and also to thank the monks for being the community leader, giving teaching of the Lord Buddha to the community for everyone. So now in this Pali language, they are giving, the monk is giving the blessing. And in summary, it means, may all the evilness, sickness, dangers be gone. May you be blessed with happiness and longevity and blessed with four blessing, long life, skin or beauty, happiness, health or strength, and wishing them all good luck for the new year. And as we now see a very sacred part of Songkran event, 
I feel like it's a very clear example of how the event is being celebrated in Thailand. And in Thailand, of course, Theravada Buddhism is an integral component of the community, not just local community, but throughout Thailand, you will find elements like this throughout uh, Thailand during, especially during Songkran festival. And to me, during Songkran is one of the most fascinating time of the year where we get to see people enjoying quality time together as a family, making merits, practicing Theravada Buddhism, and also expressing love and gratitude to the elders and their family. Now, as you can see, it is a celebration of that embrace goodwill, compassion, and also thankfulness to people around them. Um, it's also a time to start fresh for the new year and may all the past be gone uh, with like all the bad lucks as well. Wash away all the bad luck and start fresh. So from all of us at Trikaya, we really hope you enjoy our virtual tour, tour, tour today. And we cannot wait to welcome you and be at your service again whenever you get back to Thailand. So of course, wishing you a prosperous and happy year ahead. And happy Songkran Kla. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Kun Kana and the entire Trikaya team and the entire village at Bandai Gong King for sharing with us a slice of their Songkran celebration. I can feel the spirit and energy and how excited the entire community is during Songkran. Please also send my best wishes and a very happy Songkran to the head of the village, Paul Luong and Melun as well. I miss them and I'm- For sure. Happy Songkran Kuntida. Happy Songkran Kuntida. It's really nice to see you. Good to see you too. And now it's time for some Q&As. And here with us today is Mr. Gasem Sak, Mamon Satit, or Kun Pong, owner of Trikaya Tours. Sawadika Kun Pong. Every, to everybody kap, who viewing this uh, session. Kap. Happy Songkran, Thai New Year to you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, you too. <laughs> Looks like you're thank also you. in Chiang Mai, right? Yeah, I'm in Chiang Mai. I'm right in front of the Wat Ton Quen Temple. I mean, for <laughs> the viewer. <laughs> oh, you're actually at the same venue. Wonderful. Right, 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 right. I All cannot right. miss that. I cannot miss that. Oh, you are you super happy and healthy. It must be the spirit of Songkran. Of course, of course. Now we have a lot of questions coming in. Please, so let's tackle please. our first question from the audience. Shall okay, we? okay. The first question coming from the audience is, all right, a lot of people don't know Bandai Gong King. So why should tourists visit Bandai Gong King while in Chiang Mai, Thailand? What can they learn from uh, the villagers? So as you know, there's a lot to do in Chiang Mai. So what is so special about this village? First of all, I have to thank all the villagers who are willing to come and join this great ceremony today. And of course, this is the uh, Chiang Mai, uh, at, at Chiang Mai, which is known to everybody. And if you just make the program to be a bit more colorful and and to give more experience, chance to, to learn about Thai wisdom. It's just very easy to in, include Ban Krai Gong King into the itinerary of Chiang Mai, either half day or full day. Uh, it's not that far from Chiang Mai downtown at all. And from there, at that Ban Rai Gong King, they can learn the Lan Na or Chiang Mai hospitality. This is a very strong point of the people here. And again, the, the local wisdom that you just saw briefly in the video in, uh, at, at the beginning, the uh, we Thai food, then Lana food, Lana cuisine is very healthy. And you learn how to cook some of the Lana food. In Thailand, we say to eat food for medicine and vitamin, but not to eat vitamin for the food. So that is the, the, the slogan of Thai people and buy in, in the village. So it's very uh, important. And, and I would suggest that to make the program better, more colorful at Ban Lai Gong King, just into your program in Chiang Mai. I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. Thank you. Yes. The best way to travel is to immerse yourself in, in, in the travel. In the community. Right. I learn right. about Thai way of life. Now, um, let's move on to our next question, shall we? The yes. second question from the audience is, 
how do I get more information and book an experience at Bandai Gong King? So now that we're interested, like how can we book this experience? Thank you. Uh, actually, our nature of business, we help to plan uh, to telemed itinerary. So you just email me to my email address uh, at the, 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 by the end of the session. You take the note very well of my email address or you can write to Kuntida to receive my email. Immediately, when you write to me, I get back to you right away. And I all give right. all the detail. I have to plan to make everything fit into your program perfectly. Great. Thank you. Yes. Trikaya Tours has a website. Um, it's trikayatours.com. So, you, you know, check out that website to learn about all the Thailand's cultural tours Trikaya offers. Um, now, we have some time left. Let's bring the last question for, from the audience. The last question is, what other community-based tourism experience that you highly recommend besides Van Dai Gong King here while in Thailand? Okay, the, um, to plan a program to, to come to Thailand, normally American people stay in Thailand for two or three weeks, uh, which will normally go to the sightseeing and, and the beach and learn culture. It is very good to include the program in the community. And in Thailand, wherever you go, you can add the program into the itinerary of Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai, to Koh Thai, Phuket, Samui. You can just uh, co cooperate this with the program. It's very easy. And again, I am here to help you to plan a very beautiful, colorful program for you to learn. If you give me some more minutes, uh, I would like to emphasize also that uh, after the, I think during the post-COVID period, uh, I think the trend of the of the tourists can change quite a bit. People may want to to have a more learning program to experience the local and to learn how and why Thai people, can, our country, do not have that many cases of COVID. That means we have the way of of looking after ourselves, we have Buddhism that is a very strong practice for of the Thai people. Come Indeed. and and try us. And and apart from that, uh, not only the uh, sightseeing, the community-based program, come to learn Buddhist culture. Come mm -hmm. to learn Buddhist program, which we can supply you with all the detail. I am waiting for you. I'm waiting for you to come here. I'm waiting for my. I'm looking at my email every day to receive the request. <laughs> So immediately you write to me, you get back to, you can get my reply right All away. Right. Thank you very Thank much. You, Wish you a happy new year, healthy and healthy, both body and mind. Thank yes, you. indeed. Trikaya Tour is the best. If you want to experience cultural um, uh, experience in Thailand, be sure to check out Trikaya Tours. And they have, Thailand has countless destination for, you know, community-based tourism. So, you know, reach out to him. So Kun Fong, thank you so much again um, for joining us today. I hope to see you in Thailand soon. Kap Kun Ka. I wish I, I wish I have more time to talk to you. <laughs> and happy Songkran too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Kap Kun Ma Kap. Good. Have a good Songkran day today to everybody. You too. And now, ladies and gentlemen, moving on to our next session, the elephant experience in Thailand. We're taking you to Patara Elephant Farm, a family-run conservation project that specializes in health recovery for domestic elephants. Here's a short clip to give you a taste of elephant tourism in Thailand. เป็นชนชาติที่เลี้ยงเลี้ยงช้างมาตั้งแต่สมัยโบราณนะนะเลสโฟกัสไปที่ Meet the owner of Patara Elephant Farm, Mr. Tirapat Rinpagan or Kun Pat, joining us here live from Chiang Mai, Thailand. So, what is Kun Pat? What is it? Happy Songkran Thai New Year to you. Yes, Happy Songkran Festival, Happy New Year. It's a new year, it's a new day, and it's a new dawn for us. The yes. last year for us at Elephant was challenging. 
difficult, I mean, without you around, without tourism around. But I can let you know that every elephant here in Thailand are in a good condition. There's a lot of hardworking people every day taking good care of the elephant. And um, today, it's such a beautiful day. It's, it's such a delightful day for us because, you know, during a difficult time of the pandemic and tourism lockdown, many of the elephants has to return back to the remote village on the mountain. We're talking about three days hike. And as a tradition of the new year, every members of the Thai family, and of course the elephants are the family of us, has to return here for the special ceremony. So I've been missing them and I guess you are all missing the elephant as well. So um, I do and a I, lot. <laughs> The only online New Year festival that we're going to do because hopefully next year you got to be here and meet the elephant on site. Yes, okay? I, would be, um, I would make Patara Elephant Farm my first visit in Chiang Mai, Thailand. <laughs> I miss the put, elephant so much. Put on the list. Mm -hmm. So Kun Pat, um, it seems like your camera's off. So if you want to turn it back um, on um, so I we can, can see you. So Patara, um, Patara Elephant Farm, yes, we see you now. So whenever you're ready, Kun Pat, um, please go ahead and give us a tour of Patara Elephant Farm. Of course, sure do. Um, as I mentioned that the elephants are the member of the family and they are a very important part of the Songkran Festival or Thai New Year for us. Many of our elephants has returned from the remote village and they have done their three-day hike to be here and meet us all and join the ceremony. So from now on, I'm going to lead you to the Patala family, meet their senior ladies of, the, of, of Patala and then we're going to perform the uh, ceremony together with the elephant. I can hear the birds chirping. Uh, I miss Chiang Mai, Thailand so much. Oh, I can see some elephants there. So let's begin with the um, pouring water. As the water is a symbol of life and happiness. And you know, the last two years was difficult because of the drought. And hopefully this year, it's going to be much better. Mm -hmm. And what Kun Pat is doing right now is Rotnam Damhua or the water blessing to the Buddha. Yeah. So, um, the members of Patala families are here and the grandparents, which is the highly respected person, is going to give us a breath in the Norton dialects, together with the elephant humbling now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so many elephants in Pat. <laughs> yes. How many do you have in total right now? We got 10 elephants here, including the big father and also mother with a small baby. I just, I think I saw the baby one. <laughs> the baby is actually uh, very excited because everyone's are here. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we doing right now the water blessing to the elders yes to the okay. staff first and the then it's going to be for the elephant oh wonderful so elephant is part of the family and also get blessing from the elders too the uh, special white cotton string 
is the connection of the people to the elephant. So the grandmother, she is gonna uh, giving the dressing to the elephant. And then at the same time, she will be using the white string to tie it around the elephant cup. Okay. Everyone, this is Kamdan. He is 35 years old elephant and he is the father of many, many babies. So he is representing as a leader of the elephant family of Patala. He is really big. I cannot imagine how much he weighs and how much he eats. Oh, yes. Kamdan is actually one of the biggest elephants in Chiang Mai. Wow. He looks happy and healthy, good Pat. Yes. He is very healthy elephant. And you know, we also had a good news that yesterday, uh, one of our female elephants has just given birth to a girl baby. And it's his baby. Oh, congratulations, daddy. <laughs> okay. Everyone. The baby one too? Oh. oh. What is your name? <laughs> are they all are they also playing water? Not giving water to us? Oh, okay. Okay. And for myself, I'm gonna do this to the baby elephant Mira. Well, good luck catching him, Kunpat, because it seems like he's very fast. <laughs> oh, Kunpat, I don't know how you're gonna do it. He seems very good. <laughs> <What? laughs> Jesus, everywhere. Yeah, it's, you know, let alone baby elephants. I can't even get my little knees to stay still, so <laughs> it's okay. Right. So later on, every one of us, one at a time, going to be uh, take turn to do the cotton string dressing for the elephant. And af after the ceremony, we're going to have a setup and the elephant going to have their feet with plenty of food and a uh, relaxing day. And um, uh, we're going to bath them in the rivers. So give them a special few years. Especially this is the summertime in Thailand. I think they would appreciate and uh, you know a lot of bath time and <laughs> and just playing in the pool wow kunpat what an ex incredible experience i love seeing the baby elephants and um i think i remember the big guy the biggest elephant um he is one of my favorite ones too so hopefully i get oh, to yeah. see him again soon in the elephant here in thailand yes and okay. i visit Patara Elephant Park many, many times. I have to say the experience there never gets old. There's always right. something new to learn about elephants. Well, we're right. running out of time. So, Kunpat, um, <laughs> we'd like to move on to the Q&A session. Okay, I'm happy to answer the question with the elephants around. Yes, we don't mind the elephants. Keep, keep them around. <laughs> Let's tackle our first question. The first question from the audience is, how to okay. choose a responsible elephant camp to visit while in Thailand? This is a very good question. There are so many camps. How do we pick a good one, Kunpat? Well, let's make your elephant trip meaningful and supportive. Try not to do the entertaining elephant, which is kind of uh, risky and harmful for the elephant. Pick the one that do the elephant health care activity. And that's going to make your trip with the elephant educational, meaningful. And then at the same time, you're going to be the um, important part of the elephant conservation by helping the elephant to be healthy and happy. Okay, And the trip could be a well-designed one that concerns the elephant welfare. So uh, you may do more research uh, online 
or um, get information from the Tourism Authority of Thailand for the listing yeah. of the elephant health care bears tourism organization? Very good answer, Kunpat. Yes, do a lot of research to ensure that you have a meaningful elephant experience in Thailand. And a one, one that focuses on elephant health is very good. Similar like yourself, you want to learn how to take care of your own health and you want to learn how to take care of the elephant health. Um, let's move on to our next question, shall we? The second right. question from the audience. Um, are the elephants rescued elephants or from past tourist attractions or work locations? So this is a question specifically to your camp. Can I have a, a question again, please? Sure. Are, um, are these rescued elephants or they're coming from other, like where were they from? Are they from here, born and raised in Patara or they're from all, rescued from other, other camps? Or other okay. Places? Uh, numbers of our elephants are actually adopt or rescued, so you may say, from an unsuitable working condition, and like illegal work, logging, and uh, numbers of them are actually adopt uh, from the family who can no longer take care of the elephant. Uh, and not because they treat the elephant unwell, but it's because of the family reason. So we have a combination of the elephant uh, members of the family come from different backgrounds. And what we do is to make sure that they has turned to be a healthy and happy elephant. They're really happy and healthy elephants and very lucky to be at your camp. Now, right. um, time is a virtue. We have our last question from the audience. And the last question is, how can I help the elephants in Thailand? So now that, you know, some people cannot travel yet or they're still waiting, um, you know, to be ready to travel. So how can they help the elephants in Thailand during this time? Okay, uh, this is very, very uh, important things as the elephant are the citizen of the world. And I want to confirm to you that they not just belong to Thailand. The elephant belongs to everyone and it's, it's every people uh, responsibility to take care of the elephant. And I want you to know that here in Thailand, there are 3,800 domesticated elephants that have been taken well care by hardworking people. So as you know that it's a difficult time for the whole world, but um, people in Thailand do love and take care of elephants. But still, since we are not connected with the with the lockdown and you still stay apart at the opposite side of the world. So um, to be in a part of the local conservation, you may visit the website and, uh, you know, at least send them a good positive uh, message so that you know that you are appreciating their hard work or you may actually consider um, donation, give them support or even consider buying a voucher for your future trip to Thailand. And that would be very helpful for the local conservation and the people of Thailand. Very good indeed, Kun Pat. As much as I'd love to continue watching the elephants behind you squeaking, which is my favorite sound, I, right. I have to um, wrap up the session. But I'd like to thank you once again, Kun Pat, for sharing with us a slice of your Somkran and the Patara team and the gentle giants behind you. I hope to see you in, in Chiang Mai, Thailand again very soon. I hope to see everyone in Chiang Mai and the elephants are actually social animals. They miss you and, and everyone should take turns on your holidays and be with the elephant, at least a once in a lifetime experience. Thank you, Kun Pat, and happy Songkran to you and the entire Patara team. Ladies and gentlemen, also happy, happy new year. Happy new year. Yes, you can also visit pataraelephantfarm.com to learn more about the experience at Patara. And if you'd like to donate to help the elephants, you may go to thaielephantalliance.org as shown on the screen here. Um, you can take a screen grab or take a photo to help and donate the, the elephants in Thailand. And now, ladies and gentlemen, moving on to our last session of the night. It's finally time to eat and feast our eyes with some Thai food. Who's hungry? Here with us today is Chef Arnold Mint. Chef Arnold is a classically trained chef, restaurateur, and culinary instructor from Nashville, Tennessee. He's competed on Top Chefs 
and Food Network star, and has appeared and guest judge on numerous TV shows. He is a contributor with BuzzFeed Tasty, and his Instagram, Arnold Min BNA, focuses on authentic and approachable Thai and Asian inspired recipe. So, the Chef Arno. Oh, Chef Arnold, I cannot hear you. I'm not sure what happened. But maybe it's the um, the audio from one screen and not the other. Mute. Unmute. Oh, we can hear you now, Chef Arnold. Okay. Perfect. So <laughs> and happy Songkran Thai New Year to you. Happy Songkran to Hello, everyone. How are you? <laughs> so great to have you. Chef Arnold, your love for Thai food is top notch. I follow yes. you on Instagram. How did that all start? Well, I grew up in Nashville, Tennessee, which seems unlikely for someone to love Thai food, but I also grew up in my family's Thai restaurant and market. My mother is a Thai chef. We opened a restaurant in the 70s. I shortly was born afterwards. So I really grew up with the Thai flavors, traveling to Thailand, and really experiencing the Thai culture from birth to now. So I love Thai food. <laughs> Wonderful. Me too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, and today, um, Chef Arnold is going to teach us one of Thailand's ultimate street food spreads. What are we making today, Chef? Well, we are making som tam, which is a Thai papaya salad. Now, I figured we should make this today because Songkran is a big celebratory occasion. And this dish in particular really focuses and celebrates every beautiful flavor that Thailand has to offer all in one dish or cro- I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. Take it away, Chef. Yeah, okay. So like I said, som tam is a Thai papaya salad. And if you don't know what a green papaya is, this is what it looks like right here. Now, it's not ripe. It's green in the inside. And it's quite hard, actually, once you peel it. Now, there's a way to get this into these little ribbons. First, you have to get a peeler. But these peelers right here have a little zigzag. It's not like an American uh, vegetable peeler. It has a zigzag that makes juliennes. And if you really want this, you need to get on a plane to go to Thailand and bring one back with you. That's okay though. If you don't have that, you can obviously use your chef's knife here. And the way you do it, the traditional technique is to grab your knife or your cleaver and kind of just hack away at it like this. Just a little bit of a, like, you know, just in and out, in and out, not too deep. And then you take your knife and you shave it down and then you end up with these beautiful ribbons, or as we say in French cooking, juliennes, yeah? But this is a lot easier to work with like this because look, it comes off perfect. Maybe you can get it online, but you know, I'd rather go to Thailand anyways. Now with that flavor, we have a lot of beautiful, bright, fresh flavors as well. We have tomatoes and green beans for this particular version because we're making a version called Tham Thai. Yes, we also have some fun stuff like peanuts for texture, as well as dried shrimp. If you're not familiar with dried shrimp, it's salty, it's sun-dried, it's almost like jerky. Well, it is like jerky, but, um, and it has a lot of flavor and umami in the shrimp itself. I also have coconut palm sugar, and this is really cool. Look, it looks like a disc of candy. What this is, is sap from the coconut tree. It drips down, and then we catch it. We cook it down and it's sold to us like this in little coins. We can shave it, we can break it down, or we can throw it into the mortar and pestle like I'm about to do. Now the flavor is very nutty and rich and caramelized. It has a very distinct flavor, unlike um, granulated sugar or brown sugar that we have in Western cooking. There's also garlic and there's also fish sauce, which if you've never used fish sauce before, think of it like anchovy paste in Italian cooking. It tastes, it smells funky. It might be a little unapproachable at first, but trust me, once you start using this, you're never going to put it down. It's a go-to for me. And I use it in lieu of salt. In addition to that, I also have these. My favorite, right? This is the spice of Thailand right here. Pikinu. It is a Thai bird's eye chili pepper. And the heat level of these are so intense, but also the flavor is so distinct to Thai cooking. Sound good? Sounds great. Yeah. So I guess we should make the som tam, yeah? Can everybody say som tam with me? Okay. So the first thing we want to do is break up all of these flavors in this right here. It's a mortar and pestle called a krok. And it makes a really cool sound when you work with it. Like a little pop, 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 right? Doesn't that sound fun? And so everything's just going to go right into there. And the first thing I want to do um, is I want to put in some garlic. I also want to put in some tomatoes, all right? And I also want to place in my green beans, okay? And what I'm going to do here is just 
thumb away. This is the thumb part of the some thumb, right? And I'm basically juicing and releasing all of that beautiful flavor and aromatic into the bottom of the pest of the mortar. I'm releasing all of that juice. I want to get everything broken down, right? And it's kind of a workout too. So you deserve to eat a lot <laughs> when you make this. So it's fun to make this as well. Now there's other versions you can do it with guppy or salted crab, a little punkier flavors. This version is a pretty tame flavor. Um, it is actually um, called Tham Thai and it's identified as Tham Thai because it has the peanuts and the sweeter aspects of it. So what I did here was I put in a lime, all right? And actually what the lime skin does, the whole lime gives a little bit of bitter from the skin as well. So again, in Thai flavors, we have sweet and sour, salty and spicy, and sometimes I love the component of bitter, yeah? So that little bit of skin will give a nice flavor as well. Now I'm gonna add in my dried shrimp, okay, for that salt briny flavor. And then I'm also gonna add in some palm sugar. Yes, just like that. And I'm just gonna break it down and really get in there <laughs> to get that sugar broken and all those flavors married together. Sound good, right? I can smell this. I wish you could smell this, but um, hopefully you'll be able to make it one day and really experience how glorious this is. Now, while this is all happening, what we eat this with, like Lita said, it is a street food, right? It is a very popular street food, almost one of the gateway foods of Thailand, you know? It's really, really delicious. And we eat this with barbecue chicken or kayang, right? And it's, whenever you walk by a chicken vendor, it just smells, the, the aroma just fills the air and you know that you want this, you know that you want some thump, oh my gosh, I'm salivating thinking about it. And you also want some sticky rice, which is very particular with this dish. All of it works so well together, especially if you get a nice juicy some thumb, you use the sticky rice, like it's a biscuit and you can sop up all of the juice and just like, oh, stop, alloy. <laughs> I want it now. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm breaking this down just like so. And I'm gonna add some more lime, okay? And then my choice as to how many chili peppers I wanna put in. And I like to have it moderately spicy, if not more than spicy. So I'm gonna go for it and add four peppers. Oh, that's a lot. I see. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, and I'm just going to break that down. Now step back when you break this down because it can get hot when it hits you. Um, but really the flavor is quite special. All right. Then I'm going to add some fish sauce. Okay. I'm putting it at the end because I didn't want it to kind of splash on me and stink up my shirt um, just in case I have to do something after this. But I'm going to go ahead and place some fish sauce in here as well and kind of loosely grind everything up. And now it's for the main event. Okay, I'm gonna take my shaved green, uh, green papaya and add a generous, delicious portion of shaved papaya in there. And now I'm going to thumb away once again, just like so. You see how it's a workout? You see this? Yeah, I, I, this is a great, great arm, arm, arm workout. I know, like this. <laughs> so look, guys, it's so beautiful. And the more you pound on it, the more the juices of everything's going to release and come together and all the flavors are going to start to really combine and come to life. Oh, my goodness. It's fresh. It's bright. All You think it's a lot of aggressive flavors, but for whatever reason, the magic of Thai cooking is that it harmoniously comes together. And it's actually, it comes off a little sweet. Wouldn't you agree, Thita, a little bit? That's good. Yeah. So it's a nice, it's a nice flavor profile. It's not overbearingly um, funky, if you will. It actually is very well-rounded. But look at this. Can you see? Look. <laughs> so beautiful. I'm just going to place this. I actually, I'm in the States, but I actually picked up these um, plates. They're authentic Thai melamine street food plates. I picked it up in Los Angeles um, at, at a warehouse called that we like to call Thaikia. Um, it has everything you could ever want in, from Thailand, but it makes me so happy to know that it's accessible to me. Look wow, at that. that Isn't that amazing. so gorgeous? And then I'm going to put my barbecue kayang right there Perfect. and a little bit of <laughs> a little bit of sticky, <laughs> sticky rice. A little Thai sticky rice right there too. This look at is that, my guys. favorite spread, chef. And wow, you made it look so easy. 
<laughs> it's beautiful, huh? <laughs> yes, I'm now getting hungry and have to yeah, well. really seamless some Thai food later. <laughs> <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, don't worry. Um, if this demo was fast, we'll send everyone a link to the recorded session so you can always rewatch and share Chef Arnold's recipe. Um, if you want to watch it again as many times as you want. <laughs> Chef, that looks amazing. And I'm going to have to remake that um, yes. later tonight. Yes. Now, we have a, I see a lot of questions coming in from the audience. Okay. So let's bring the first question up. The first question from the audience is, what can I use instead of green papaya and fish sauce? Because those are kind of hard to find. In instead of green, okay. So what can you use instead of green papaya and fish sauce? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> wow. Um, I can't imagine. It's fine. I, I, I get questions like this all the time. So I know sometimes things like this are hard to find, are not, are not accessible. Growing up, actually, my mother used to make this with shaved carrot. Um, and actually when I went to Thailand, I would see the fancier Thai restaurants make it with shaved carrot, but I love it with green papaya. Um, you could also do cabbage. I know that you do something with the squash or something as well, right? There's a certain kind of squash you can use. But, I um, turnips. <laughs> oh, turnips. Okay. That would work. And then also there's a version of this, like you can see, I have green beans. I actually was craving this midsummer during quarantine and I just made it with thumb tua, which means with green beans only. Green beans. And it's really beautiful. It's bright. It tastes grassy, a little bit different. Nothing compares to a green papaya, but you yeah. can definitely get the flavors um, by yeah. substituting things like that. And then in terms of fish sauce, um, I know that right now, because of the times, because of supply and demand, there are a few vegan or vegetarian fish sauces, if that's the concern. You could also use something like an amino, a liquid amino, um, which is very trendy these days. It's like a soy substitute. I use something called sauce kukau, which is very common in Thai cooking. It's, it's a seasoning sauce, um, gluten-free. Um, I wouldn't suggest soy sauce. I would maybe just suggest going for finding the fish sauce and going for that. <laughs> right. Honestly. Make a, make a trip to the Asian market. You'll find fish sauce everywhere. Yes. And right. online's available too. You can always and get things online. I just find that there's a vegan fish sauce today from you. I never yeah. knew. <laughs> All right. Let's bring up the next question from the audience. Next question is, how do I make sticky rice without a steamer basket? We saw some of them. You have to eat with sticky rice. How do you make one without a steamer basket? Okay, th there were, we're referring to this, right? So this is what a, a traditional Thai steam basket looks like right here. It smiles just like all the amazing smiles in Thailand, right? And basically you soak a certain kind of rice, you put it into, into this basket and you steam it slowly. And the grains are very different from a jasmine or a long grain rice. So if you don't have this, search for one and get one. <laughs> no, or I know that I know that a uh, Thai uh, tourism office, a uh, Thailand insider office, they do something in a microwave. They actually do this often, right? Yes, and you can do it all it. the I time in our office. The microwave <laughs> sticky rice. Yeah, I know there 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 are ways to do that. I actually think people always do it in the rice cooker. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but the microwave seems to be a, a, something that I believe my mother made too. She did sometimes. But you'll have to Google that one. I'm not too confident. <laughs> yes, I, I believe it's on YouTube. Like Google how to make Thai sticky rice with microwave. Yeah, it's pretty Crazy. intriguing actually. It works, right? It works. So we do it all the time, Jeff, <laughs> in the office. <laughs> well, um, time is a virtue. Let's bring our last but most important question up. The last question is, how do I get more information and book a Thai cooking class with you? Mm, where? Do you want to do it here in Thailand? It's your choice. Oh. <laughs> Um, to book a Thai cooking class with me, I do periodically a lot of classes. Um, I do them online virtually right now because of all of the restrictions. So I, I just go to my website and I have a list of things that I do. I'm also very active on social media like Instagram. I don't know if I can say that, but I just did. Um, you can just find videos and guides there too that kind of get you and ease you into the journey. I, I introduce the flavors. I break down the pantry. Um, I show you equipment as well as te teaching cooking techniques. So my website's where you can find me. Fantastic. We'll put up Chef Arnold's website at the end. And yes, he is very active on social. Be sure to follow him at Arnold Mint BNA for more inspired Thai recipe. Chef, thank you so much today. I wish we had more time, but um, I guess we'll have to keep it for next time. Yeah, for see you next time for sure. <laughs> hint, hint. <laughs> Stay tuned. We had so much fun. Thank you and happy Songkran. Thai New Year to you. Kap Kun Ka. I hope to see you again. Okay, ขอบคุณมากครับทุกคน. Happy Songkran. Happy Songkran, Chef.
Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of our session today. Thank you so much for joining us and we hope you enjoyed our Songkran session. If you have any follow-up questions, you may reach us at the contacts shown here. I suggest you to take a photo or a screen grab so that you have all our contact information here. And be sure to follow us at Thailand Insider to get inspired about all things Thailand. Once again, we'll be sending you a recorded version of the session and a short survey via email as we'd love to hear from you. And as a thank you, we'll be sending our fabulous, eco-friendly, amazing Thailand reusable bag to keep you stylish. As you can see here, my lovely TAT New York team showing you guys how fabulous our amazing Thailand reusable bag is. And it's very light, it's foldable. You can always put in your backpack and keep it around. Now, on behalf of the Tourism Authority of Thailand, we would like to extend our best wishes and a happy Songkran Thai New Year to you all. We hope this session inspires your journey to Thailand this year because you deserve it. In the meantime, please stay safe and remember to be kind to yourself and those around you. Whatever you do today, Begin with a smile. See you in amazing Thailand. Sukhsanwan Songkran. Sawadee These feelings are waiting for you to come back. From the north to the south, from northeast to west, from world famous beaches. Untouched islands, from time to time, from place to place. From the ocean, up to the sky, from color to color, from street. To rooftop. From hot to cold. From city to nature. From traditional to festival. From dusk till dawn, around the clock, around the country. Amazing feelings are waiting for you to explore again. Once the world is ready, until we meet again. Amazing Thailand.